Yeah. You can show me anything you want. There's no way you can convince me he wasn't an asshole. Hey guys, this is Dominique Wilkins. Hey, this is Sean Kemp. This is Gary Payton. Hey, this is Paul Gasol. NBA fans, what's up? This is Vince Carter here. Hey, what's up? This is Matt Barnes. If you're an old school NBA fan like I am, make sure you check out the basketball time machine with my man Sean Davis. Hello and good day to y'all. Welcome back to the Basketball Time Machine. My name is Sean David. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you're ready for old school NBA basketball. Today's episode is going to be a very short and brief one, but I had to do it. I basically just sat on the couch, watched my favorite NBA show, NBA Open Court, and I saw a clip which I'm going to talk about later anyway. But before we dive into today's episode, let me ask you guys for a small favor. Please subscribe to the channel and like the video if you enjoy the content. And I would say without any more blah blah. Oh, I haven't said that in a while. Let's get right into it. So, as I said in the beginning of the video, I was just lying on the couch and I was going through my collection of NBA Open Court episodes and I found an episode which, for whatever reason, I've never seen before. I think I've seen like tiny bits of it, but I've never seen the full episode. It was called, let me think, it was Clutch Moments. I don't know if you know the episode, but yeah, I haven't heard about that episode before. And at the end there was... A segment which was called the top five clutch moments of all time and Isaiah Thomas was asked what is his favorite clutch moment in the NBA Finals and this is what he had to say. Game's over. I'm, I'm gonna go with Jordan. Um, Utah, everybody knows the ball is coming to him. All eyes are on him. He's got to get a shot. Somehow he maneuvers, gets his man off balance, was that a foul? It, 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 refs but, don't but, call fouls in it. Oh, right, right. It, it, right. it, was, it, was, call yeah. fouls in those it was It was the Reggie Miller push-off. Yeah, okay, okay, <laughs> he just okay. had okay. the ball. But even though he got open, and right. that's, that's what I mean by clutch and pressure, mm -hmm. because everybody knows it's coming to him. You got to make it. You got to get open. He finds a way to get open, right? And now he's standing at the foul line after, you know, a historic career, you standing at the foul line and you knock that shot down and he captures the moment after he makes the shot. I think he understood the moment. The Utah fans in the building understood the moment. And it was just one of those priceless moments in sport where when he stood there and just held the gooseneck, he held it the yep. ball was in the <laughs> hole and it was it was like it was like Muhammad Ali standing over Sonny Liston saying, yeah. get up, get up. <laughs> I don't know. It was great. So the thing with Isaiah Thomas is, and I recently did a video about him, he, in my opinion, is the second best point guard of all time. And I really, really like him as a basketball player. I like him as a journalist. I think he's very entertaining. I like the way how he is handling him and carrying himself. Um, so I got nothing but love for him. The only thing that I have a problem with is, and I think I covered that in a recent episode, that he always changed his mind about Michael Jordan. Just to give you a short example, um, in the early 1990s, Isaiah Thomas said that Michael Jordan to him is the greatest player of all time then in the late 1990s so I'm talking about 1998 he still said that Jordan was the greatest player of all time I think he said it in the Everybody 1998 finals on his great moves but look at the simple things just a little easy pump fake lines it up gets itself square and goes up in perfect form that's what makes him the great player it's not the flashy thing just the little simple things that he does it's his fundamental base combined with a skill base that makes him the greatest player to ever play. And you say that without hesitation. Without hesitation. You weren't always convinced. There was a point maybe midway through his career where you wouldn't have given him that honor, but eventually he won you over, right? Well, when, you, when you're playing against him, you know you're not going to say that because you got to come out and compete against him. But now sitting over here in the mic and being out of the game for three or four years and watching, and watching what he's done over the last couple of years, Without question, this guy's the greatest that I've ever seen play. Then, for whatever reason, in the mid 
Now, in the late 2000s, he changed his mind and said that Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was the greatest player of all time, which is kind of funny to me because Kareem retired in 1989, so he did nothing which bettered his career. So he didn't accomplish anything since then. So what did he do that he suddenly surpassed Michael Jordan? So that was one thing that was kind of strange to me. And... Then you have different segments from different shows where he's saying that LeBron James might be the greatest, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is the greatest, and he's not mentioning Jordan as the GOAT anymore, which, as I said earlier, is kind of strange. Um, but that doesn't take away of Isaiah Thomas being a sensational basketball player and also being a great uh, analyst and TV person. So, But the clip that, that we just took a look at, to me, I was very surprised because that clip has to be like from 2014 to 2015. So before the Last Dance documentary where the beef with Jordan and Isaiah Thomas started to escalate. Um, and I was surprised to see that Isaiah Thomas openly said that this was his favorite playoff clutch moment in, in the finals. So that to me again shows that... Um, at, that, at least at that point, he was not a Michael Jordan hater because he easily could have picked any other moment. I mean, there are countless great moments in the NBA Finals, So, but he did not hate on Jordan. He actually gave Jordan the respect and said, okay, uh, that was my favorite um, clutch moment of all time. Plus, just remember it, I think from the same season of NBA Open Court, I just remember, I remembered, he also called Jordan the GOAT. So that, again, is Isaiah Thomas, which uh, changing his mind every okay, once in a while. I don't while. mind Michael Jordan saying, Thank I you. didn't want Isaiah to be on the dream team. Are you feeling <laughs> better now that it's, that it's come out, Isaiah? Well, you know, Ernie, I, you know, it's, it's been a while. It's been on my mind, you know, for about, you know, 25 years yeah. right now. <laughs> this is know. like a weight is being lifted off of you. Well, yeah, because I finally get to talk about it and just, you know, the whole dream team experience. And again, I... I got no problems with, you know, the, the greatest player to ever play, say he don't want to play with me, or, you know, the, the greatest player to ever play. But at least that shows to me that Isaiah Thomas was able to give Jordan his, uh, his credit. And, which we also covered in my recent episode, I, uh, Jordan also considered Isaiah Thomas to be the second greatest point guard of all time. I respect Isaiah Thomas's talent. It, to me, the best point guard of all time is Magic Johnson, and right behind him is Isaiah Thomas. To me, as a fan, especially of the 1980s and 1990s, I just wish they could sit down and clear out the differences. And I get it from a competitive standpoint that, that there are certain players who will never get along, but I like them both so much. I just wish they could shake hands and just let bygones be bygones and everything is cool. Because I know deep in Isaiah's heart, I believe that he knows that Jordan is the greatest player of all time. And as Jordan said already, he considers Isaiah Thomas to be the second greatest point guard of all time. I think Jordan, with all the pettiness that he sometimes have has, and yes, I'm the greatest Jordan fan, but I know that he has this side to him. Um, he can still admit when a player is great. And calling Isaiah Thomas the second best player of all time just show uh, second uh, greatest point guard of all time just shows that he really has respect for his game so i would like to know from you guys um please let me know in the comments below do you also wish um that isaiah thomas and jordan would finally get along and ever that the war is in the past and everything is cool like i don't like i don't have a problem with jordan and bill and beer hating each other i don't give a you know what i'm saying um but with isaiah and and jordan I think it would be nice. Uh, I, I was excited. I was, I was very happy. Uh, you know, it, was, it was an electricity appeal to us. I was in a hotel room in Memphis, and uh, I, I couldn't leave from in front of the television. I had a one o'clock flight. The game was coming on at noon, and I couldn't leave from in front of the television. I ended up missing my flight because I, I just couldn't leave the television. I wanted to sit down there and, and get my pool of joy. <laughs> in terms of his quickness, his strength, his jumping ability, his touch, and also his knowledge and understanding for the game. He, he by far, uh, you know, is the best I've ever seen. Uh, and, and, and Irvin's my boy, mm -hmm. but, you know, air. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's something else. Yeah. 
Ah, he real sweet. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the dude, you see what he be doing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs>